Hi there, and welcome to a new video in our OutSystems Quick Tips series. I'm Sven, consultant and trainer at AgentBase, and today I'm going to show you some things uh, you need for the user management in OutSystems. So as here you can see a list of users. Um, this would be our end users, that user app, and um, sample users you create um, during development, for example. And all these are stored here in your user entity. Um, the user entity is normally already imported when you create a new module. If it isn't for some reason or you deleted it or something, uh, just go over here over, um, to manage dependencies. And then here in your system module, you can find the user entity. So there are basically two main ways to manipulate your users. Uh, the first one and the quicker one would be the website, the user management. <clears throat> so what you need for that, um, your environment link, that's what you find here in your uh, lower right corner. And you just click this link and put slash users after that. And you log in with the same credentials you use everywhere else. <clears throat> and then you can see here your list of users. And here you could just say create a new user. And then just say call it test. And some password. And then we created our user. <clears throat> there are some uh, more functionalities like assigning to user uh, to groups or uh, assigning a specific role to the user. That's a topic for a later video. And you can see here our new user is here in our user list. And you can also edit the user here. And also, if you want to delete this, just click on edit this user and then delete this user. And then he's gone. So that's fine when you just want to uh, create one or two users real quick. But let's say you want to create users in your app, or you want to create a bunch of users for testing purposes. That would be pretty tedious. So there are other ways. Um, as you can see here, the user entity is just a normal entity, so it has the CRUD operations. And you can use this in your app. For example, here, I just created a, a user list screen and uh, user details. And you can see that here, here I've got my user list, and here I can just say add user. So there's one really important point um, that you need to look out for. So let's just create a new user. We just call him, let's say it's again, test. And as password, I will take uh, the actual word password. So I save this here. And I did the same when I just say here, create demo user. Now it's created, and the user is called demo user, and the password is also password. But there's one really uh, important difference. So here in my uh, demo user action, I just use um, the create user action from the user entity. And what this does, you will see in here when, I, when we take a look at the users again, it just stores the password as plain text. Of course, it's really bad. You can see here in the test user, I also use the, the word password. And here I, ha I have the uh, hashed value. So there are two uh, reasons why this is really bad. Of course, security is uh, one thing. So you don't want to have the, your password just stored as plain text in your uh, database. Um, and another thing is you can't log in with this user. Because let's show, let's just try it. I'll take the user demo user. And then just to show you, I'll take the actual word password and I'll put it in here. Now I'm trying to log in with it. And it doesn't work because if I put in a password here, uh, it will get hashed. So all systems uh, generally, um, if you log in somewhere, the passwords are stored as, ha as uh, their hashed values. And so if you input some value, they get hashed. And then these two normally both hashed values um, are, are being compared. But here I, I do not have a hashed value. I have the word itself. So as you can see here, that's the hashed value of password. And that's well, password as a word. And of course, those don't match. So let's just take my other test user. The password is again password. And here, login works. So um, how can we fix that? Um, we need this encrypt password action. Um, you can see here it's from the user uh, users module. Also, just um, go to manage dependencies and then import this users module and then encrypt password. And then what I've done is I basically recreated the creator update action and just used the encrypt password here beforehand. 
So as an input, I just have a, um, a variable of the type user. So I have all my information in here. I need to create users. And then here in my encrypt password action, um, you always need the username and then the password you get here as an input. Um, then, of course, it's really important in the creator update action, you use all the things you get from your input here, but not the password. You use the password that has gone through this encrypt password action. And as you've seen before, that's the way it gets stored in the database uh, as you want it here. Um, now, another point I talked about uh, in the beginning, if you want to create a bunch of users. So let's go back to our app here. I have this bulk create button. So let's say I want to create 10 users. Just um, input the value here, say bulk create, and then it says created. So uh, what I did in here is I made this bulk create users action. I have an input that's just a number I put in. So um, uh, 10 basically right now. And then um, I just go through this uh, for loop that I built myself. Uh, how you build such a for loop, um, I explained in one of the previous videos. So if you're interested in that, just take a look at that. And um, again, an important thing is we use this encrypt password action. So we can have a look. We should have created 10 users now. And that's exactly what we did. Then we use a one to 10 with the uh, passwords hashed. And yeah, that's basically the basics of how to create users, manage users. Um, in the next videos, we'll go into a little more detail, as I said, um, assigning roles to users and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, tune in and maybe see you in the next one.